How to Use Nix with Jenkins. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.426.3. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent that has Nix installed on it. Now you might be asking yourself, what is Nix? Well, if we take a look at Nix.dev, Nix is a tool for people who need computers to do exactly as intended, repeatedly, far into the future. So what does that really mean? One thing that Nix gives us the ability to do is install specific tools into a shell that we're using. Another way to think about it is, the only tool I actually need to install on my machine is Nix. And then from within Nix, I can start a shell and install whatever tools I need within that shell. I don't need to use any kind of other package manager to grab a binary and drop it down onto my machine. I can do all of that using Nix. Now, from a Jenkins perspective, I don't necessarily want to be downloading tools all the time into a specific shell, but there may be use cases to where you just need to grab something or you're wanting to test something out. And Nix gives you that ability to test those things out quickly before you can commit to creating a full image that has all of the tools that you need on a specific either bare metal server or a VM. Now, if you're using Kubernetes or Docker, you're probably already gonna be using images that already have the tools in it that you need. Probably wouldn't use Nix in that case, but for bare metal and VMs, Nix is a great way to handle that tooling chaos that sometimes you run into. So let's look and see how we can use Nix within a Jenkins file. So let's go ahead and go over to our controller. We actually have two jobs we're gonna take a look at. First off, let's take a look at Nix example. And we take a look at the configuration. What we have is a couple of stages. First off, we're gonna check the version of Nix that's installed, Nix dash dash version. And then we're going to see if kubectl is installed or not. Then we'll go ahead and move down to the next line, Nix shell, to where we install kubectl package, and then we run the command kubectl version. So what we would expect is we would expect this kubectl to fail, and then we would expect this kubectl to succeed. Now, there's a lot of moving parts to get to this point, but I wanna start with the simple version before we move on to the more maintainable version. So let's take a look at this simple version first. So check the versions. We're connecting up to agent one. That's actually where Nix is installed. So let's go ahead, click on save. And let's go ahead and click on build now. Now, if we take a look at the output, we can see that our job failed. And when we run Nix version, we can see that Nix command is not found. Well, let's go over into our agent. I am logged into the agent using the exact same user that the connection from the controller down to the agent is using. So if I type Nix version here, what I can see is Nix is at 2.20.1. So why did it work when I'm logged in interactively to the agent and why did it not work from the agent within the controller? If you listen carefully to what I just said, I said interactive login and non-interactive login. Well, what's happening is through the interactive login, my path, interactively already has the Nix binary path in. That's this very first section here. But if we were to take a look at the path from a Jenkins agent perspective, we're not going to see that included. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we add the Nix binary to the path. We know what the value is. The value is home vagrant dot Nix dash profile slash bin. So let's go ahead and copy this and let's go over to our agent. So I'll click on dashboard, agent one. We'll go to configuration. And let's go ahead and add in an environment variable to make sure that's included on the path. Now, what I'm going to do, if you take a look at the documentation for the environment variables, Jenkins has a special syntax, base plus extra. The best way to look at this is take a look here. Path plus local underscore bin, and we're gonna include whatever the value is for that path. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a path plus nix underscore bin, and then we'll put in the path down to our nix binary. So I'll say name is path, plus nix underscore bin. I'm gonna paste in the value to the bin directory. So let's go ahead and click on save. So at this point, the environment variable that we need will be included in with the agent. So let's go ahead and click on dashboard. We'll go back over to our job and let's click on build now. Now what we can see here is the job failed. Let's go ahead and go all the way up top first and double check how everything looks. What we can see here is the output for Nix dash dash version did come back. It now says 2.20.1, just like what we saw over in our interactive session. But when we run kubectl version dash dash client, that fails because that's what we expect. Uh, but we wanted to go ahead and keep on running, so we piped in true to that command. 
So it's not found. Next up, we run our Nix Shell Packages kubectl. Now, how do I know what the package is? Well, you can search for Nix OS and look for more than 80,000 packages. In my case, most of the names are always going to be the same, but I'd go ahead and look it up anyway. Look for kubectl, and I can see that, yep, kubectl is here. I can expand this. How to install it? I would say dash P or dash dash packages. There's a number of different ways to look at this, but this lets me know that kubectl is the package name I want to go after. But if we take a look at the output, what we see here is it's finding everything that's going to need to get set up for this Nix shell session. It starts copying, but then all of a sudden we get a lot of SSL errors, specifically SSL connect error 35s. Well, what does this mean? In this case, what it's telling me is that Nix is unaware of where the SSL certificate bundle is on this machine. Now, if we were to go back over into our agent, and if I was to echo out a specific environment variable, that environment variable is nix underscore SSL cert file. So nix underscore SSL underscore cert underscore file. If I echo this out in the interactive session, what I can see here is it's pointing at a specific file on the file system. Again, our agent is unaware of that because of how it's connected. So let's go ahead and copy this value and let's do the same thing that we did for the path. So let's go ahead and go back over to our agent one. We'll modify our configuration. Let's add in a new environment variable. We'll paste in the value, Etsy SSL certs CA bundle. And let's go ahead and include the environment variable just straight. Now, notice how we did this a little bit differently. We don't need to append this to anything. This is just a value that we need to set. So Nix is aware of where that certificate file is. Let's go ahead and click on save. Let's go ahead and go back over to the job and let's run it one more time. Now, if we take a look at this, we can see that the job finished successfully. And in fact, right above the bottom here, we can see the client version for kubectl is 1.28.4. But if you'll notice here, what's happened is it went through, it's saying all of these files are gonna be fetched. It's gonna be a bit, roughly an 83 meg download. Once it unpacks, it's gonna be roughly 393 meg. Everything that's getting downloaded here, it's being copied. So we know that we resolved the SSL issue, and then finally we get the output. But if we were to take a look one more time at our configuration here, what we don't want to do is always set up a Nix shell and pass in a list of packages and then run commands. What we want to be able to do is define what that list of packages is that we need for the shell. And we can do that using a file called shell.nix. Now let's go take a look at a sample repository. The link for this repository is down in the description. What I have here is a basic Spring Boot app. It was created directly from start.spring.io. I included the Spring web package, and that's it. But you'll notice here a little bit of a difference from what you would typically get from that output. I've removed all of the Maven-related files except for POMXML. So I removed the .maven, the mavenws, all of those are gone. The only thing I kept was POMXML. But you'll also notice here that I have a shell.nix file. Shell.nix is a special file that the nix-shell command knows what to do with. So we're gonna take a look at the values for shell.nix. We have an import at the very top during the make shell and build inputs. And then what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to install Maven, Hugo, and GH. Now we're only gonna be looking at the Maven one, but I included two other binaries just so you could see how that would work. Again, the way I found out what these values needed to be is I went over to my nixOS searched and found the packages that I needed to install. So my shell.nix file has been defined. Let's go back over and take a look at now at our Jenkins file. Now our Jenkins file is fairly clean and straightforward. Notice that I'm not doing a dash P to install a package. Nix shell will see the shell.nix file. It will take care of installing everything that's necessary for that shell, and then the command will run within that shell. So within my shell.nix file, I've included Maven, Hugo, and GH. So let's take a look and see what happens when we run these commands in each of our stages. So let's go back to our controller. We'll go over to the job that's included in Jenkins example Nix. This job is pointing at the Jenkins file we just looked at in the repository. Let's go ahead and click on build now. Now that the job completed, let's go ahead and take a look at it from top to bottom. So if we were to take a look, starting at the top, what we can see here is our nix shell command mvm clean install happened. That was the very first command within our Jenkins file. But then it noticed, that was the first time nix shell was started up, 
it was checking, oh, I've got a shell nix file here. Let's see what's going on. Well, it sees that it needed to go ahead and install Maven, Hugo, and GH. So it figured out what tools needed to be installed. Roughly 500 meg needed to be downloaded. It was going to be almost a little over a gig when it unpacked. It downloaded all the files, set it up in the shell. And then from that point forward, we ran our Maven clean install. Everything ran normal there. We get through Maven clean install. We'll get to our second one where we run Hugo version. We see the output of Hugo 122. And we have GH version, which shows us the version for 243.1. Now, the job finished, but if we were to take a look at it, we can see that it ran in roughly a little over a minute. But what happens when I run this again? What would you expect to happen? So if I click on build now, what we can see here from the output is that the second stage, the build stage, the Maven stage, instead of a minute, nine seconds, only took 21 seconds. Now the other stages took roughly the same, two to three seconds, a second off here and there, no big deal. Well, what happened here? Well, we take a look at the output of number two. We can see Maven clean install and it went right into actually doing the Maven clean install. So it took 20 seconds to do that. That's fine. It took what it took. But what this tells me is that it was using the cache from the previous run. And now this agent has all the tools that it needs in order to go ahead and run the rest of this job. So I'm not going to be paying the tax again to take that download because Nix is aware of the tools already being installed and cached for usage. However, if I wanted to have a completely clean environment every time I ran the job, there's a way to do that. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to modify my Jenkins file. Let's edit this and include a new post stage. So I'm going to say post always. And in this case, I'm going to include the command nix dash store space dash dash gc. And what that's going to do is it's going to garbage collect or completely remove the cache that is within the nix store. So if we go ahead and tab over here, we'll close this up. So what this means is every time this job runs, it's going to do a fresh install because of Nick shell here, and it's going to throw away everything at the end. So let's test that out. Let's click on commit changes. Let's go ahead and go back over to our job. Let's click on build now. What we expect with this build right now is we expect the first job to run pretty fast. In fact, it'll run in about 20 to 25 seconds. But once it gets down into that post, it's going to wipe out everything within our Nick's cache. Let's see what happens here. So what we'll see here now that it completed is we get down to the bottom, we can see our Hugo version, we can see our GH version, and then we see our command nix store dash dash gc. It's finding the garbage collector roots, it finds everything, and then it deletes garbage. So if we take a look here, all the stores are done. So if we go back over to our job and run it one more time, what we're going to expect is that we expect the job to start up just like what we saw when we ran it the first time, and we're gonna see the full download again of everything that's coming down. In this case, about 570 meg, roughly a gig and a half that's gonna be unpacked. Once everything is installed and downloaded, we'll go back into our Maven clean install. We'll see our output from Hugo. We'll also see our output from GH version. And then we get back into completely removing everything in the next store completely wiping out any kind of cache that Nix was using. Now, whether or not you want to go through and delete your cache on every run, that's up to you. But realize if you do that, you're gonna be downloading fresh every time and it will take longer for your job to complete. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, Click on that subscribe button and then ring that bell and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video.